Hey everyone, it's Bobbo. Um, thanks for checking my video. It's been a while. I um, wanted to make a video on a new AR I just got. Um, the purpose of this video is because I was considering buying an AR. I mean, I knew I wanted one, but uh, and I was looking at this new model, the Armalite Eagle Arms Division Eagle 15. Um, a budget rifle, entry level, whatever you want to call it. But this video is not for the AR experts out there who, you know, have mid to high end rifles and, and know everything about ARs and are, are partial to a certain brand or whichever. Now, I don't get paid by Armalite or anybody, not sponsored in any way by uh, anybody with ammo or firearms or accessories. But um, this video is for those people who are maybe considering their first AR or their first semi-automatic rifle. You know, a lot of people these days, um, the times being what they are, are going out there looking to buy a sporting rifle and assault rifle. They don't know if they want an AR or an AK or you know, whatever else you have out there. But um, this one here, and uh, this is how it comes in the box. If you go to a gun shop and buy it like I did, you'll be able to, you know, hold it, examine it, things like that. But um, hopefully with this video, we'll answer some questions, um, show you, maybe you might get an impression as to if this is a quality rifle or not for the price. You might be able to find one online for, um, you know, a lower price than I paid. This was $579, which I think is an excellent price because you could easily pay double and, you know, maybe not get double the money's worth or maybe get something that you don't really need. But um, if you order it online, this is how it's going to come in a box. It comes with um, one Magpul P-Mag. It's the M2 style mag. It'll initially come in this um, plastic sleeve, but uh, pretty basic after that. Just open the box. This is what you get. We'll go safe here. And uh, no mag, empty chamber, so, so it's safe. So, out of the box, this is how it comes, except for with the rear sight. So it's not ready to fire out of the box, because initially it comes with a flat top receiver and no rear sight. So you're not going to shoot it that way. You'll need to pick up a rear sight, so it's going to add to the cost. So $579 plus this was $60 for a rear sight. So, you know, you're looking at um, $650 to get it. Uh, into a shooting configuration. So um, I'll get up close here, show you some things about this rifle. Um, but basically, this is your standard AR. Um, it comes with an adjustable or a collapsible stock, five or six positions, fully extended and uh, all the way collapsed. I generally like to run fully extended or um, one position in. Now this is a no-name stock, it's not branded in any way, but it works just like any other collapsible stock. It's got standard hand guards, it's got an A2 style gas block in front sight fixed. Um, can't do anything about this, the only way to get rid of it is to, uh, some people take this off if they want, um, you know, a fully flat top with no sight. Some people change out the gas block, but this is how it comes. Um, let's get up close here so we can take a look at the markings because I'm sure everybody's interested in that. Hopefully you can see here in the uh, lighting that we have out today. But here's the lower receiver. It says Eagle Arms. Sort of nice logo there. Division Armalite. So this is an Armalite brand. Eagle Arms is a division of Armalite. Caliber Multi. It does not say 556 and it does not say 223. So caliber multi, it's the Eagle 15 model. Okay, Eagle Arms, Armalite Eagle 15. Um, features, it's got just your standard AR features. Um, the selector lever here, safe and fire. Um, this is nice and positive with some nice clicking. And it's not hard, it actually feels like it's broken in. Um, I've got a SIG 516 rifle that the safety selector switch or this uh, is very hard. Um, feels like it's going to take 
years for it to break in, whereas this feels super nice already. The um, barrel, let's show you that because this is fairly new from what I understand. And hopefully this will show up on video. On the barrel, it says 223 Wildy. Now, I don't know, maybe it's Wild or Wildy. I apologize to those who know the correct pronunciation. But 223 Wildy is the chambering of this rifle. It's chrome molly uh, steel. Um, I don't think it's a chrome lined barrel. But as you can tell, it is a heavy barrel. It does not have the M4 um, contours. It does, have, does not have any lightning along this way from here to here. Some um, consistent diameter, standard uh, style birdcage flash hider. But um, let me show you something else. Hopefully I won't struggle with this too much because this spring is extremely tight. Remove the top portion of the handguard and you can see how heavy this barrel is from rear to front. It's extremely heavy here. It takes a slight reduction in diameter from here forward, but we're talking heavy barrel from rear all the way to the front. Now I don't think that's something that you're going to find in a lot of entry-level rifles. Um, a lot that I've looked at in this price range have sporting barrels, which are very narrow. Um, but this is a heavy barrel, in case anyone was wondering. There it is right there. So let's see if I have enough grip strength and technique to get this back on without struggling too much. There we go. But um, overall, this firearm does not feel cheap to me in any way. Um, it is what I'm used to seeing in an AR. Um, very standard. It's got a dust cover. It's got a forward assist. Your charging handle. And there goes my timer. So let me take a cut on the video. We'll talk just a minute or two um, about the gun and then we'll get to shooting it. <laughs> Alright, sorry about that. Um, okay, so my initial out-of-the-box impressions are this is, is this is a very nice rifle. It does not feel cheap in any way. Uh, you can hold it by the grip here, grab the forearm, wiggle it. There's some some side-to-side -side play. Um, it's nothing that affects the operation of the firearm. I shot it uh, 10 rounds so I know it functions with 223 ammo, but um, we're going to shoot it some more um, with some 5.56 ammo. But oh, I forgot to talk about this 223 wild chambering. Um, in case people are curious about that, because I was, I had to do some reading on the internet, and basically what that is, if it's a consideration to you um, in buying this rifle, is what is 223 wild. Um, basically, you start from let's see, if you bought a 5.56 rifle or a, an AR that was chambered 5.56, you'd be able to shoot that ammo obviously, and you could also shoot 223 Remington out of it. But the problem became with some shooters who wanted, um, you know, extreme accuracy, maybe at longer ranges could get it out of the 5.56, but not out of the 223 Remington in a rifle that was chambered just for 5.56. So if you bought a 223 Remington chambering in an AR, you would not safely be able to shoot 5.56 ammo in it because that round has higher pressure. Um, you might be able to get, who knows, a few rounds off or maybe a lot, but basically it's not recommended to shoot 5.56 in a rifle that's chambered only for 223 Remington. So this 223 Wild chambering still allows you to shoot both safely, 5.56 and 223 Remington. Um, but the chamber is slightly different um, in this area where it either solves the accuracy problem in shooting 223 ammo um, 
out of a 5.56 gun or it minimizes it. It reduces the, the problem with accuracy when shooting 223 out of 5.56. This 223 wild um, chambering is supposed to have good accuracy using either caliber of ammo. That's my understanding of it. So I'm going to take a cut, I'm going to load up um, the factory mag, and I got an extra mag. It's, it's the same thing, Magpul P mag. It's a generation three, um, slightly different in some manner, I'm not sure. Uh, like I said, um, I'm not an AR expert. This, is, this video is not for AR experts who already know all this stuff. But we'll load up some 223. Um, this is what I'm shooting here today is some Remington UMC in 223 and I just picked up a box of a small box of Winchester white box 5.56 so we'll load one mag with uh, 10 rounds each and we'll fire it see if it has any problems and if it does uh, you'll see it on camera I won't even have to tell you about it but um, and hopefully at the end of this video um, it'll have helped you decide if this is worth the money as a budget rifle. Okay, so let's take a quick cut to load up some mags. Okay, we got the mags loaded up. I actually put 15 in each one. We'll start with the 223 and then we'll shoot the 5.56. Got a steel target downrange. And um, we'll just go at some, you know, sustained fire and then maybe, you know, some a few double taps or triple taps or whatever, but it's about 25 yards away, so it's not a big deal. We're just going to test for uh, shootability, function, you know, see how it recoils, it's soft, you know, there's, you know, what, well, at least one guy out there who's a big pansy and a big crybaby who wants to say that this thing traumatized him and hurt him and all that stuff, but uh, it's definitely a soft shooting rifle. Um, any ladies out there or, you know, smaller men, who knows? People are afraid of firearms, big guys. Um, there's nothing to be afraid of here. Uh, this rifle is not going to hurt you in any way. So let's just commence to some shooting. Okay, there was 15 rounds of 223 um, bolt locked open on the last round so that was the generation 2 mag this is a gen 3 mag just broke it right out of the packaging load it with some 556 and we'll just do the same thing here real quick Okay, locked open on the last um, round there. So that's basically it for the shooting. Um, so that was 30 rounds of some sustained fire. The barrel is definitely hot. Um, Handguard is not, there's some warmth coming out of it. But as you can see, the um, rifle functioned just fine. Um, got all hits on the target, which is not hard. It's 16 inch by 20 steel target at 25 yards. So um, I, I doubt that I'll do an accuracy test with this um, unless I put an optic on it and um, you know set up uh, my table to do that. But I hope this video helped. Um, there's no fault I can find this rifle at all either you know function or firing um, it's definitely in my opinion worth the money um, or you get what you pay for easily with this um, 650 not counting the ammo is basically what you're into with this Armalite um, Eagle Arms Eagle 15 even though you got to buy a, a rear sight of some kind or an optic um, 
I definitely feel that it's money well spent. Um, you will not feel like you got a, you know, bargain basement rifle or something that lacks a feature that you need. This has everything that you need on it. Um, all you need to buy is an extra mag or two if you want that. Um, I generally like to run a mag link, so I've got two mags on the rifle. But um, that's it. If you guys have any questions, um, I'm not sure if I can answer them more than what I've described in this video as to you know the chambering, um, but it does shoot both 5.56 and 223 Remington just fine as you can see. Um, I, I really don't know what else to say about this uh, rifle other than it shoots. I'm happy with it. Um, I feel like I got the features and the quality of the rifle that I paid for. In fact, it might even be worth more than what uh, the asking price is. Um, and, and for sure, if you wanted to, the options are endless as far as uh, modifying um, this rifle, or maybe I shouldn't say modify, but accessorizing. You could do so much with ARs if, if that's what you want to do, but prepared to be prepared to spend some money. Um, a lot of people like to upgrade the furniture, uh, get a different rear stock, different grip, different forend. Maybe they want a free floating um, feature, um, better trigger group, who knows. But I believe that if you want to go out there and spend $600 on an AR, that this Eagle 15 from Armalite will not disappoint you in any way. Uh, it's not a piston driven design. You're going to spend big, big bucks if you want to do that. This is a, a direct impingement design. There, there's no problems with those. There's, there's uh, probably millions of them out there. They've been around forever. So um, that's basically it. If you guys have any questions, please post them in the um, comments section. I'll try to get around to it. If there's anything else you want to see, you know, I'm not going to drag this thing through the sand or the mud or do any of those kind of crazy tests to it because um, uh, it's already a proven design and there's lots of people who've done that and have posted videos on it. So I won't do anything like that uh, with this rifle. But um, anyway, uh, I'm done shooting for today. I don't want to chew up too much ammo. Um, I'm on a budget, obviously. That's where this rifle comes in. Uh, if I had, uh, you know, unlimited amount of money for ammo, I'd have, I probably would have spent two or three times as much for a rifle. But 650, ready to fire, um, definitely worth the money. Um, nothing cheap about it other than the plastic. But you know, you're gonna get plastic. Okay, guys, uh, cut me off. Sorry, I get long-winded, but I was talking about the plastic. It's, it's, plastic is cheap, no matter what you do. The the plastic on my Sig. 516 is uh, maybe seems thicker um, but it's still plastic you know that you can get uh, whatever a beefier style if you want but I think it's uh, definitely money well spent uh, I know it is I feel confident that it is definitely do not feel like I made a bad choice so hopefully this video helped um, if you guys want to go up you know order up one of these online I think you can it's a safe bet to do it you will not be disappointed thank you